We've all sat through a lesson of Sunday school on Easter and learned about the story of Jesus at some point in our lives. As kids and even adults, we were taught that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world and then three days later was resurrected from the dead. But one question I've always had is why did Jesus have to do this? And how exactly did being crucified on a cross redeem the world of its sin? We're going to explore all this in this video, so make sure to keep watching. And if you haven't already gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, go ahead and do so if you want to see more videos like this. Let's dive right in. So first, to answer the question, why did Jesus have to die to redeem humanity? We have to go back to why humanity needed to be redeemed in the first place. We can find the answer to this in the book of Genesis. When God first created Adam and Eve in the garden, they were without sin and perfectly good in the sight of God. At that time, death was not needed because sin had not yet entered the world in relation to the wages of sin being death. Because they were spotless, they had the ability to pass between the spiritual and physical dimensions and God gave them dominion over the whole world. Unfortunately, they were not the only beings on the planet at that time and you probably know who I'm talking about. Besides Adam and Eve, Satan was also in the garden. Why was Satan allowed to be in the garden? Well, let's leave that for a later video. The story goes, Satan tempted Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so when Eve succumbed to her temptation and then led Adam to do the same, they had not only inflicted the curse of sin upon the world, but in doing so had invited death into the world. Not just physical death, but spiritual death. Adam and Eve were no longer sinless, and so humanity no longer could pass between dimensions so easily. They had separated heaven from earth, and they handed the dominion that God gave them over the world into the hands of Satan. After this, they were exiled out of Eden and initiated a long line of struggle and pain for the generations to come. But in the midst of their intense shame and disgrace god in his infinite love and mercy prophesied against satan concerning how he would one day redeem humanity so that all hope would not be lost so the lord god said to the serpent because you have done this i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers he will crush your head and you will strike his heel so all the way back in Genesis, God had already made reference to his redemptive plan to reunite heaven with earth, bring humanity back out of sin, and to conquer death, specifically spiritual death. So now that we know the backstory, we can see why Jesus had to come and do what he did. But my next question is, how exactly did Jesus dying on a cross redeem humanity? So first, we need to understand something about dimensional law. Just like in the physical dimension, we have the laws of physics that the universe tends to naturally abide by. In the spiritual dimension, we also have the laws of spirits that spiritual beings abide by. You'll probably hear me talk about this more in future videos, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. One of those spiritual laws is that the wages of sin is death. So in order to pay the price of sin and cover the debt of committing sin, something has to die. Life must be sacrificed. This is why in the Old Testament before Jesus came, the children of Israel would have to make blood sacrifices in order to atone for their sins. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood, and it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. This is yet another spiritual law that our dimensions naturally abide by. The price of sin is death. The life is in the blood. And so by shedding blood, you pay the price of sin and render yourself clean once again. 
This is also why priests would have to make blood sacrifices before entering into the Holy of Holies within the temple because you cannot enter the presence of God with sin. You have to be spotless. So now we can see how Jesus dying affected humanity according to dimensional law, but what was so special about the blood of Jesus that paid the price of everyone's sin? Well, Jesus was not made of ordinary flesh and was not conceived like a normal human. He was the son of God. He shared the DNA of God, meaning that his blood was God's blood. And since God is life itself and the life is in the blood and Jesus shared the same blood of God, this means that no ordinary blood was shed on the cross for our sins, but God in the flesh, the blood of life itself, was shed on the cross for our sins. So according to dimensional law, this is how humanity was redeemed and the curse inflicted on the world by Adam was reversed when Jesus was crucified. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice and the unearned gift that paid off humanity's immense debt of sin. And as the blood of life itself was shed and the curse was lifted, the physical and spiritual dimensions were bridged once again and humanity regained access to the presence of God without the need of blood sacrifices. Now as we confess the name of Jesus and believe in him, we too can pass between dimensions and we no longer owe sin our lives because we have been made debt free by the blood of the ultimate lamb according to dimensional law. God did this because obviously he loves us and because he doesn't want us to have eternal death, but he wants us to have eternal life. Jesus was a gift from the Father. All you have to do is receive it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to Skill Sanctum for more videos like this. If you have any questions or revelations, feel free to leave a comment below. I hope this video answered some questions you might have had and I hope to see you again soon back in the sanctum. Thanks for watching and have a blessed life.